All right, you guys can grab a seat. For those of you who do not know my name, my name is Pastor David mm, J. Mm, Hardy. And some of you are wondering why there's a big bearded man in front of you saying, mmm, that's kind of scary. That's how I introduce myself everywhere. It's kind of a fun thing that we can do together. So would you help me with the mmms? Can you help me with the mmms? You can do that. I know you can. Now wait, I'm going to tell you when. I'm going to tell you when. For those of you who do not know my name, my name is Pastor David mm, J. Mmm, Hardy. You did a very good job. Give yourselves a round of applause. Excellent. So you're wondering who this big bearded fellow is who stands before you right now. I will tell you this. I know all of you because every single one of you who is wearing one of these Encounter Conference t-shirts, I made that t-shirt. Uh-huh. You're like, whoa, I didn't know real people made t-shirts. I thought they were just little fairies in a factory far away. No, I made all of your t-shirts. So like I drew this, right? So like by hand, drew the back of your shirt, anything that has Encounter Conference on it uh, from last year and this year, that's me, I'm that guy, okay? So who I am, I, yeah, you can clap for that. I'm down. I need a self-esteem boost. So I was a youth pastor for 12 wonderful, glorious years. Uh, then I started a, a clothing t-shirt company, uh, and I am a traveling youth evangelist. Recently, I actually moved to Lancaster, Pennsylvania to go back into youth ministry because my best friend called me and said, hey, I need a youth pastor. So I do that, and I make t-shirts. Who's ever been to Lancaster? A few of you? Yeah, yeah, okay. Sight and Sound, you ever been to Sight and Sound Theater? Anybody see David? Sight and Sound Theater, you saw David, wasn't that epic? That was amazing, right? That was absolutely amazing, so. Cool, well this morning here, we are going to be talking about friendships, building godly friendships, okay? Um, there is gonna be a Q&A time at the end. You can ask me anything about question, um, friendships or anything. I love questions, uh, and so I'd love to answer any of those questions. You can write them down and do that, okay? But. I am a storyteller, I always tell stories, and I'm going to tell you an unbelievably epic story right now. Are you guys ready for that? You ready? All right. So when I was young, who's ever been to church camp before? Church camp, like okay, like some different church camps. Well, I went to a church camp back in the 90s, all right? This is way back. And we, at this camp, we had this thing that we would do that I had heard about um, it was, I was going into the senior high camp, so I was in ninth grade, and I had heard legends of this rite of passage, this high dive that everybody talked about. Now, we would go to Settler's Cabin. Um, anybody ever been to Settler's Cabin Wave Pool? Probably a few of you. Okay, we, now this is back in the day. We would go to Settler's Cabin Wave Pool, and everybody was so pumped to go off the high dive. Now, I was a ninth grader, okay? I just wanted to keep my head down. I did not want anybody, like, I, I, I didn't want a crowd. I didn't want anything. I didn't want to get judged at all. I just wanted to keep, you know, no, just do nothing. Do nothing and just survive, right? So we're on the bus. Everybody's talking about this high dive. Oh, this is so epic. This is amazing. And I, I do not like heights. Who here does not like heights? Anybody does not like heights? I do not like heights. I do not enjoy them. It's not my thing. I, like somebody was like, hey, would you rather go bungee jumping or jump out of an airplane? And I'm like, neither. I like to sit on my couch and watch Netflix, okay? Like, I do not want to do that. So, I'm in the back of the bus. Now, you need to know this. There was a girl. There's always a girl. All good stories always have there was a girl in it, right? And she was like two seats in front in, on the bus. She was talking to her friend. And she's like, you yeah, know, if like somebody would go off the high dive, that's how everybody talked in the 90s, just so you know. If somebody would like go off the high dive, they would like be the totally coolest person ever. And I'm like, oh. So I look over at my friend and I'm like, dude, I think I might go off the high dive. Instantly, my friend 
stands up in the chair and goes, hey, everybody, Dave's going to go off the high dive. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Because like once, once people hear, hey, you might go off the high dive, they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. <clears throat> so we pull up. I, in my mind, was thinking that this was a very large diving board, okay? Like, say, a 12-foot diving board. No, 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 no. As we drove up, I could see this massive monument, like a tower of doom over this entire park. And I'm like, what is that? It was a full Olympic dive structure, like concrete and metal and everything. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what have I done? What have I signed myself up for? So we all get there. Now there was a lot of seniors like, yeah, I'm gonna go off the high dive. I'm gonna go do a backflip off the high dive, man. And then they got there like, uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. So everybody, they're like, was well, somebody gonna go off the high dive? And my friend turns around, he's like, Dave, you said you're gonna go off the high dive. And I was like, ah, I, ah, uh. And as I'm doing that, I looked at the girl and she's like, you should go off the high dive. And I'm like, ah. Now here's something you need to know about me. I'm wearing contacts right now, okay? But when I was young, I mean, I still have such bad eyesight that my eye doctor makes fun of me, which is kind of insensitive if you think about it. Like I go, into, I go in and he's like, are you still blind as a bat? And I'm like, that's mean, you're a terrible person. But I had the big Coke bottle glasses back in the day, so I had these big, huge glasses, can't see, can't see without them. My son hid them one time for an April Fool's joke and I was like blind, you know, trying to get my glasses for an hour. So I got to take off my glasses and I hand them to a friend and I walk up and there's this giant sign giving instructions on what you need to do with the high dive. And I go, guys, I can't read that. Cause there was like this barrier. I couldn't even, I couldn't get close enough to read it. I'm like, what's that say? And my friend's like, it's fine. You're fine. Not a problem. Just go, just go, just go. And I'm like, okay. So I get over to the, to the ladder and I start climbing and I'm climbing and climbing. And I'm getting tired. And I'm like, I look back and I realize like, oh my goodness, if I fall from here, I'm dead. Like, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, hold on, keep climbing, climbing, climbing. My head's getting dizzy. Finally, I get to the top and I get out and I realize that's only the first platform. There are three platforms. And so I go, I climb up the second one climb up to the third one. I get out. I kid you not. I am in the middle of a cloud, right? Birds are flying at eye level with me. You know, I'm like, Oh my goodness. I look down at my friends and they're all little ants, you know? And I'm like, Oh my goodness. I get up to the diving board and I'm like, I, like I, you know, kind of get up there real close, put my toes over the edge. And you know what happened in my head? The same thing that would happen in your head. The same thing. See, God did not build us to jump off of big high structures, right? There's something that happens in your body when you get over the thing and you look down and you do the mental math and you realize, oh no, if I jump, I will surely die. And so I'm like, in that moment, the, the lifeguard goes, hey, kid, did you, I can't hear him. I'm like, what? He's like, did you, and I'm like, I don't know. He goes, just jump. You see, what he was trying to ask me was, hey, kid, did you, according to the instructions that you were supposed to read, did you dive off the first one and then dive off the second one so that when you get to the third one, you're not terrified and you go do something ridiculous and then you die. 
But see, I couldn't read the sign because I would have you know, dove off the first one and be like, okay, I'm done. Peace out. I, I nearly died on that one. I'm not doing the third one because this happens to people. And I'm up there and I'm, I, he, when he goes, just jump, I'm like, I think I could climb back down the ladder. I think, and I was thinking about it in my head, you know, I was creating that scenario of like, I just want to live. I don't, I, I don't even care what my friends say. I'm going to climb down the ladder. But I thought, you know what? I'll never live it down. Forever and ever and ever, I am going to be the kid who climbed down the ladder. You guys know what I'm talking about. Because like ninth grade is a very, eighth grade into ninth grade, it's a very important time. You're setting the tone. And forever, you know, people are going to be at my wedding being like, hey, you remember when you, you know, wouldn't jump off the high dive and you climbed down? So I went out there, went to the edge. I fought all those feelings that said, no, don't jump. Stood there and I jumped. I fell so fast and so far. I was screaming. I went, ah, ah. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you advice. This is totally free, okay? but it may save your life someday. If you are ever going to jump off of a very high structure into water and you don't know how to dive, which I did not know how to dive, okay? So if you do not know how to dive, what you are supposed to do is you jump off and you do what's called a pencil dive, okay? You put your hands above your head, you hold your hands up here and you look up, very important that you look up into the air and you know what will happen? You will, go, you will cut right into that water. You will survive probably, unless it's really, really high. But if you go and jump off of a high structure and you are not prepared to do that thing and you look down as you are falling, do you know what will happen to your body? Your body will go where your eyes go. And so as I was falling, looking down at the impending doom below me, which is what you would do naturally, my entire body went completely parallel with the water. And by the time I reached the bottom, Boom! I did the world's biggest belly smacker. Everything hurt. It was like this massive jolt throughout my entire system. I closed my eyes. Listen, guys, I truly believe that I was going to see Jesus reaching out his hand when I opened my eyes saying, Come home, my son. Come home. So I go, like, I'm like flopping, like, you know, and I get, I get up, because I can remember hearing my friends like, oh, and then when I hit, they go, oh, you know, because it's like, bam. And then they start clapping like crazy, like they're going nuts. They're like, yeah, yeah, woohoo, this is awesome, this is awesome. And then I start climbing out of the pool, and they all go, Kee! because my body was more red than your t shirt, all right? Like, it was like, red and purple and blue. My face was all messed up. My ribs were all messed up. Like I was like in so much pain. You know what was interesting? In that moment when I was up there and they were all like chanting for me to dive, I realized something. I realized they were not chanting for me. They were chanting for a story. They didn't care what happened to me right? They didn't care, you know, if Dave dies, it'll be like, well, this will be really cool. See, this is before cell phones. They would want to go viral with this, or, you know, that would be for TikTok or whatnot back then. But this was just, they wanted to tell their grandchildren how they saw a ninth grader die jumping off of a high dive, right? Here's the worst part. You ready for this? I looked over at that girl. Everybody's clapping. I looked over at that girl. You know what she said? She went, eh, and walked away. Now, I know, now, it's like, so really, did you get the girl? No, I didn't, I didn't get the girl. I know, it's like, it's, it's so brutal. Now, here's the thing, okay. Funny, 
crazy, ridiculous story. In that story, did my friends have my best intentions at heart? They did not, right? They absolutely did not. They, were, they just wanted a story. They wanted to see somebody, you know, get splattered and destroyed. Today we're going to be talking about having good friends, right? Like, here's the thing. You want to have good friends. The key to having good friends is being a good friend, okay? Being a good friend. And we're, and we're going to talk about that and dive into some of that stuff. But being a good friend. In order to have good friends, you need to be a good friend. Take a moment with me. We're going to pray. And then we're going to, just, we're going to dig in to some of the theory on all of this. Okay? Let's pray. God, I thank you for this funny story. Thank you for um, all of this stuff. I thank you for this illustration. But God, I just pray that you would inspire us to be good friends. And Lord, I pray that you would inspire us to make an impact in people's lives as good friends. Lord, guide and direct as you see fit. In your precious and holy name, name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. See, there, you can have these friends, like, if you take a, a person, a, um, everybody in middle school, is everybody in middle school? No, what grade are you guys in? So, like seventh, eighth grade, tw ninth grade, twelfth grade, thirteenth grade, community college. No, what? <laughs> good. good. Uh, who's in? Who's in tenth grade? Raise your hand. Who's in ninth grade? Raise your hand. Okay, so we got uh, eleventh graders. Any eleventh graders? Okay. And so this is actually high school. I thought this was. I didn't. I thought you were big for middle school. There are any middle schoolers in here? Any eighth graders? All right. So yeah, that's what I thought. All right. So in. If you, this was crazy. My wife one time showed me a picture that she had from middle school. It was now, I mean, I didn't know any of these people, but having been a youth pastor for, you know, a long time, I was able to call, like, even with this picture and how everybody was acting in those moments, I was able to call people who were fake friends, people who were not real, people who were only out looking for themselves, even just from seeing, you know, a few pictures of these middle school kids and, you know, what they were doing. There's a lot of fake friends out there, right? There's a lot of people, right? I got some amens, you're like, mm-hmm. Th there's a lot of people who just are trying to climb the ladder, Right? They're just using people to try to climb the ladder. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if they know what's at the top of the ladder, but they're just trying to get it no matter, you know, hey, I got to do this and hey, I, I want to be this and hey, you know, some type of social jockeying. Those people are not good friends because they view other people as objects, as stories, as ways to get what they want. So number one, you cannot view people as objects. You must, you want to be viewed as a person, right? Who here wants to be viewed as a person? Yes, you do. You want to be viewed as a person. You want to be treated as a person. You do not want to be treated as an object, right? You don't want to be treated as a story. Um, the key one of the major keys to, be, to being a good friend is, this is going to be academic, is actually caring about your friends. Okay? It makes it sacrificing for your friends, right? Now, some of you, some of you leave your friends on red, right? Some of you are like, you're like you know, you just ignore, you know. You, who wants... It, it, if something really bad happens, right now, I want everybody to close their eyes. Everybody close their eyes. Something really bad happens. Let's say, let's, I mean, you had the worst day of your life. Worst day of your life. You can't go to your mom, you can't go to your dad, you can't go to your siblings. Okay? I want you to picture the friend who you would go to. Okay? The friend who you would call up and say, I need to talk. I need help. Some of you know that you, so you got that person pictured, right? Hopefully, 
If people, if if everybody, if everybody was doing this exercise, hopefully somebody would be picturing you. You can open your eyes. You've got that person though, right? Like I know who I've had. The Lord has blessed me with very good friends in my life. There have been people like, and I didn't deserve them. Some of them were just amazing friends. I had a friend that I called. I I just I remember so vividly. This was in my adult life. I called him at two o'clock in the morning. Anytime you get a call at two o'clock in the morning. Either somebody's butt dialing you and it's very inconvenient or it's very serious, right? Like very, very serious. And I called him at two o'clock in the morning on the absolute worst day of my life because I had just lost a baby and I was devastated. I mean, I wasn't pregnant, but my wife was, and it was a really, really difficult moment. And I had, I, it was somebody that I knew that I could go to no matter what in the moment, like no judgment, no anything, everything's horrible, terrible. And my whole world is blowing up. And there was somebody out there who I knew that I could go to who, not like my friends who wanted me to just jump off of a high dive, you know, but somebody who actually cared about me, who would lift me up, who would just be a blessing in that moment. That's who you want to be. You want to be somebody. It, friendships, there's, there's too many takers in friendships. Right? There's too many like, I, you know, and you know that you got, I, the person who calls you up and is like, hey, I, I really need help. And you're like, this is the 12th time that you've called and it's all about taking. It's not a two-way street. It's not, it's not, it's not a two-way street. It's just like, take, 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 take. We, what we're meant to do is we're meant to bear each other's burdens, but that is mutual, right? So if you want good friends, you need to set your heart to being a good friend. Being a good friend takes sacrifice, okay? It takes sacrifice. It takes every single day being, you know, even in the midst of like all the chaos, Somebody needs you for something saying, yes, I'm willing to help you out. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to go the extra mile. You know, when you get older, I'm willing to help you move. Trust me, that will happen. You know, you will get called on to move multiple times sometimes, you know, but be willing because guess what? Someday you're going to need to move. You're going to have things going on in your life and you're going to, and you're going to want your friends to be like, yes, we would, I would be glad to help you out. I would be extremely happy to help you out. So the key, one of the biggest keys to being a good friend is, or to having good friends is being a good friend. The other thing now, this is hard. You need, there's friendships that are based on character. Those are the best friendships. Okay. Character friendships that are based on character. Friendships are based on integrity. A lot of our friendships in our world is actually based on proximity. Okay, do you know what that means? Proximity. Right now, you are in close proximity to about 50 people. Okay, there's some people who are sitting closer than others, and it's relatively random, not completely random. I don't believe in I don't believe in coincidences. I believe God brings people in our lives. But what's interesting is usually. You're friends with people because you went to the same school with them because they lived in the same county or region or town as you. And then you just so happen to sit at a lunch table or go to this thing or that. And sometimes you have friendships that are based on proximity, not necessarily character. And when we choose, when we choose our relationships based solely on proximity and we're not choosing them on character, that can really get us in trouble. You want friends of good character. I will, I, I, a true statement has been made. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I'm telling you, the older I get, the more I realize it's true. So if you want to be, if, if, uh, if you want to be a kind, loving person, you need to hang out with kind, loving people. Specifically, if you want... Um, you know, like I, I knew I wanted to be a youth pastor since I was in like 10th grade and I was on a trajectory to do that, but I had a bunch of friends who were not on that path, right? 
I still love them, but I couldn't do the things that they were doing anymore. I couldn't participate in that. And we went in two very different directions. I loved them. I cared about them. But like, I couldn't do it. And I ended up spending most of my time with friends from camp, friends from youth group, friends because they were friends of character. I remember my wedding, the, the, uh, the five guys who were my groomsmen, I didn't go to school, high school, with any of them. They were all friends that I had met someplace else that was some type of church event, some type of thing, because that was the direction that God was leading. Now, I'm not saying you have to leave all your school friends, but if they're pulling you down, and you know what I'm talking about, if they're pulling you down constantly, and their entire worldview, their entire life is all about um, them and themselves and stuff that's not a part of what God is calling you to do, you may have to make some hard decisions. There are some friendships that you need to put some distance between you and them. And it's hard. I'm not saying it's easy. But trust me, I'm telling you, the further you go, those friends will pull you down and they just want a story. They just sometimes want to see you crash and burn. Okay? So these are, these are some principles. Now, we have a little bit of time and I love Q&A because I want to answer the questions that you have. So right now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to give a little bit of time. If you have a question, raise your hand. It would be great if it was about friendship, all right? But if you need to ask me about my amazing, wonderful beard, I will answer that. So I will answer any questions you have. But questions about friendships, being good friends, um, ultimately following God in this season of life where friends are massively important. And they are. They're incredibly important. So who's got questions? I was born this way. I came out looking like this. I had a beard in utero, actually. And no, I'm just, uh, I actually have no chin. My wife has never seen me clean shaven, and she's known me since the year 2000. I know, right? So I have had a beard since the year 2000. And actually, actually, my beard is worth $4,672.47. Yep. Do you know how I know that? Because at the camp that I was the director of, uh, people wanted to shave my beard, and I told them that anybody, who, the people who raised the most money for the camp that could shave my beard, but then there was another group that wanted to save my beard, and so they were like warring clans, and um, eventually the Save the Beard won, and they raised that much money for, and you know, sent a bunch of kids to camp, so my beard has literally saved lives. All right, friendship questions, come on. We, I know you got friendship questions. Any friendship questions at all? Oh, yep, go ahead. How about like in friendships creating those boundaries? Oh, yes. Yeah, keep going. Ask the full question, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, creating boundaries and also like figuring out ways to like make sure that like people are not like intruding those boundaries. Yes, yes. Boundaries are incredibly important, okay? Um, I'm going to go with, so moral boundaries are very, very important. So biblical boundaries, very, very important. So um, in friendships, like one of the big things when I was in high school, I played football, had a bunch of pl football player friends. And the, the thing that we did that football players did, and everybody knows this to some degree, everybody got hammered, right? So it was drinking, 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 drinking all the time. I had to make decisions, very you know, intentional decisions on where I was going to be, like what I was going to put myself into, um, and I did not go to the party. I just didn't go, right? Like I knew that they were going to be getting hammered. I knew what was going to happen. And so those boundaries, and my friends knew this. Now, did I get some ridicule from it? Yes. Were they authentic friends? They were friends of proximity, right? We, like, we played football together. So that boundary, you're, you want your friends to know and respect your boundaries. 
Okay, so what that boundary is, like, nah, man, I'm not gonna go get hammered. I'm not gonna go do this. Um, so that needs to be established in the friendship. Boundaries as far as people who are vampires, right? Does anybody know a vampire, like a friendship vampire, a relationship vampire? Okay, you don't have, don't point any fingers. Be like, oh, this guy, this guy right here, he's a vampire. But there are people who suck the life out of you, right? Like they, they, you know, and it is because it becomes a take, 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 take. You need to establish sometimes for some people saying, I can't, these, like, you can even say like, this is too much. You need to give verbal statements like, I can't go here. I can't do this. This is too much, um, even in the relationship. And sometimes, sometimes actually silence is your friend, you know, because they're asking for too many things. Does that make sense? Is that what you were thinking about with boundaries or are you thinking about something else? Okay, does that make sense? Good, 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 good. Other questions? Yes. Um, what about friends that aren't pulling you down but aren't really critical? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a fantastic question. So we have different levels of friends, okay? So I, I think, you know, see, back, back in my day, none of you are going to know this. Back in my day, we had different levels of friends. It was on MySpace, and we had our top five friends, and we would just, now, you, nobody knows. Does anybody even know that MySpace existed? Okay, so you know it existed. It was so, that was so ridiculous, because there was so much, there was so much drama based around, like, I saw that Shelly changed you know, me to one and this, it was so stupid. Um, you have, you do have different friends and different like closeness. I don't think like who here right now would say you have one best friend, raise your hand. They're my one, they're my ride or die one best friend. Who here would say I have multiple best friends and it's kind of ridiculous to only have one, right? So like, that's where I'm at. Like, I, I think that we have friends who are like in our inner circle of friends who we spend most of our time with. And those are the friends who are going to influence you the most, okay? Those are the friends that you are going to need to trust um, and are gonna grow you. The problem is if you, you can have friends that are secondary or tertiary friends, right? So second level, third level. Um, you can only, if so if they do not know Jesus, you can only have so much of a friendship with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So their worldview is going to be very different from yours. You can be friends with them, but there are probably more boundaries there. There's, um, and there's a different language understanding. Like, you know, uh, they're just not going to understand why you have certain beliefs and they don't. Uh, but obviously I, I, maybe I, I haven't said this, but, uh, I believe that the best form of evangelism is relationship evangelism, like befriending people, doing life with them, introducing them to Jesus. Absolutely. I just don't know if that can be initially friendship of deep character. Do you get what I'm saying? So there is always going to be like, there's always going to be a worldview difference there. Um, I have many, I'm 39 years old. One of my very good friends uh, from when I was in high school is in a black metal band, you know? And I'm a youth pastor. We're different. Uh, we just view things very differently. We're still friends, um, but it's just we, we view things differently. But my, like, my deepest, closest friendships right now are, you know... Um, people who are ultimately, who have the same worldview. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did I answer the question? Do you need any more? Okay. Any other questions? Yes. What about if you have a friend who struggles like with mental health or mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. and the relationship isn't good for you, but like you're their only like way of supporting them? Like their only friend. There's, so there's time. So the relationship may not be good for you, right? Hold on. Shh, shh, shh. You, there is a point in time where you may have to say, I have to take a break from this. Like this is, I can see this relationship 
absolutely pulling me down. And like, I, so you're almost, almost developing the mental issues that that person has, right? Because they're, they're pulling you into a lot of stuff and you're like, I can't do this. You need to be an incredibly strong person to minister to somebody else in that scenario, right? That, I'm not telling you not to be that person, but like if at some point in time you start feeling like I am actually like, this is actually breaking me down, I need some distance and time. You are not a mental health worker, right? You're not uh, a pastor yet or anything, you know, right? You're not, you're not actually the hero in this story. Well, one, you're not the hero Jesus is, okay? So there's some times that friends put way too much of a burden on their friends and they actually need help, okay? They need professional spiritual help that you maybe can't give them, but you point them to somebody who can. That is a hard balance because I'm not telling you to give up on them, but sometimes you need to have to put some distance because if they, so it's like drowning, right? Like if you're trying to save somebody who's drowning, if you dive in and they drown both of you, what good is that? Like now you're both dead. You know what I mean? So you need to, you need to, you need to set some boundaries and you need to know yourself. You know, there's some things like, I know that I, like I can take a lot, but there's a certain point was like, I can't do any more. I'm just banging my head against the wall. And that may be a time when that person needs to be, you know, one of the biggest problems Friends who ask you for advice constantly, yet won't do any of the good things that you tell them to do, right? They're like, I don't know how to lose weight. Are you eating an Oreo right now? Is that an Oreo and a hot dog at the same time? And a lemonade? That's disgusting. You have a problem. No. But like, yeah, I know. I, I, that got real bad. That, that got real dark real fast. Yeah, that escalated. I do that sometimes. Um, so it's like people who just won't listen, you know? Like that's, it's, it's, like, it's like nonstop. And it's like you need, it, it, point them back to the advice that you had given them. Like, hey, do you remember when I told you that you need to stop doing drugs? Or do you remember when I told you that you need to reconcile with your parents? Or do you remember when I told you not to get a facial tattoo? You know what I mean? That was probably a bad idea, you know, so. No, true story, I had a kid. I had a kid from my old youth group who got an upside down cross facial tattoo a few weeks ago. And he was trying to tell everybody, I kid you not, he was on Facebook trying to explain why it wasn't satanic. He's like, it's actually the sign of Peter. No, it's an upside down. Okay, let's stop, let's pause. It's a facial tattoo. Please hear me, please. I love you all, I love you all. No tattoos here. Can we do that? Can you just remember, this is, this is where I'm at now. Just, just none here, just none here. Can we just go with this? Can we all just agree to this right now? You don't have to, but like, I'm, I'm just telling you, high risk. Okay, did it, good job. All right, other questions about facial tattoos or anything else? Somebody who I haven't called, I, I, I will call on you if there's, anybody else have any other questions? Yes, go ahead. Those are hard, aren't they? They're good. I mean, because I've got a lot, since I've moved to Lancaster, now I've got all these long distance friendships from people who live here because I used to live here. Those are hard. Um, it's good to keep them, it's good to keep them going, right? But they don't, nothing replaces incarnational meetings, right? Like meeting in the flesh, seeing that person doing things. I would, I would invest on, I would invest in seeing that person sometimes, you know what I mean? But see, the thing is, is Instagram and Facebook and TikTok make us feel like we're really connected to these people and to our friends, but there's still that screen barrier and it's, it's not the same, you know? So, but I, I think that, and sometimes actually it's interesting, sometimes friendships that are far away can be better because they're not, they're not constantly in your life like 
you don't have to fully, uh, you're not kind of being pulled in all these different directions. You have somebody who's somewhat objective in your life elsewhere. So it's, they're not, they're good, but they're hard. If they take work, right? You have to, you know, how do you communicate? Text? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they take a lot of work, but good question. Any other questions? Yes. Go ahead. A story, okay, go ahead. You said that friends you are with around, around you affect who you are. Yeah. Well, I, I have this friend named Zoe. She's like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And when we first met each other, she was like, she's like a church girl. She always went to church and stuff. And then mm -hmm. over like maybe a year or something, we got to know each other better. And we slowly became more friends, like mm -hmm. close friends. And she, she invited me to church and mom was like, inviting me over and over and eventually mom was like all right fine <laughs> okay yeah okay and good the church she's actually the person that pulled me towards church and i wouldn't be here right now that's awesome her. i'm we're, we're thankful for zoe that's a great story yeah that is a great story i i love that that persistence and listen, if you have friends who do not know Jesus, one of the easiest ways to introduce them to Jesus is to invite them to youth group, to invite them to church, to invite them to things. Don't give up. And eventually they may say, yes, that's great. Yeah. Do I have a girlfriend? <laughs> Wait, you can't say that again? Say that one more time. Can you have a girl that's a friend? Can you have a girlfriend? Or did this just turn into a dating relationship thing? Listen, I started with a girlfriend, and then she turned into a fiance, then turned to my wife. Is that I, I'm just trying to? Can you have a girlfriend? There, there seems to be some underlying things to this. So, do you have a girlfriend? Do you want a girlfriend? Okay, then don't have a girlfriend. I just don't understand the question. Am I, am I missing it? Am I missing the question? Okay. But you can have a girlfriend. It's okay to have a girlfriend. Good. I can't, I'm coming. Oh, shh, 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 shh. I got to hear these questions. We got like a few more minutes. Yes, go ahead. Um, distance. You, you're you're going to have to be perceivedly rude a little bit. So you're going to have to give some distance and you're going to have to be firm about it. And then eventually silence is the best answer. So not, not, not ghosting. Ghosting is cowardly. Okay. Ghosting is cowardly. So some distance be like, listen, this, you got to be truthful. Like this is where you broke these boundaries, right? I got, I got, I need some time. You can say, I need some time to heal or I need some time to whatever. Does that make sense? All right. Yes. Oh, what was the design process like? Um, so we, so we picked a bunch of different, like we had like a mood board and we picked a bunch of different like, uh, thought processes. Um, cause you know, we've got all, you know, various different feels, right? Um, and so the lion and the lamb was like what we're seeing with a lot of the Christian influencers that are doing uh, a lot of really, really significant branding is it's kind of going back to this uh, vintage like 70s, 80s look, but really cool. Um, people want substance in their shirts now is what we're starting to see. So people don't want just like, you know, encounter conference written in some like sweet font, but they actually want something that has Christian symbolism. So the lion and the lamb symbolism was like, oh, this really, really works. And so drawing the lion and the lamb was really cool. And we, we there's, there's, um, some B-roll stuff that you haven't seen. There's a bunch of stuff that we did that was like, ah, no, not this one, but we really like that. That was actually not gonna be a secondary shirt and that became the main shirt because people liked it so much. So do you guys like it? Yeah. Yeah. Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Yes? I still can't get by the comment about how you were born like that. I feel like that would be terrible for your mother. It was. I was... You should pray for my mom. She's recovering, though. She's recovering. 
You're still stuck on that. It's, yeah. Yeah, could you imagine a baby that came out looking like me? That would be, that would be very, very tough. All right, we got enough time for like two more questions. You can ask me anything. So we talked about the encounter shirts. Uh, he was asking about, you know, my birth, you know, which is a little, I can't believe you're getting so personal right now. Ask me about my birth. Uh, you probably could. I believe you could. I don't want you to. Let's, let's pump the brakes there. We're going to establish some boundaries right now. Okay. All right, go ahead. Well, wait, wait, anybody else? Anybody else? Cause I'm going to let him go. Anybody other questions about anything? I'll answer a question about anything. Literally anything. Anything. Go ahead. Yes. Hold on. Wait. Say this again. As a child, was I fat? And then what? So as a child, I was actually in shape. Okay. I was in really good shape. I was a power lifter when I was younger. And then youth ministry did this to me. So like pizza, 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 pizza. So, um, no. But I will tell you that actually years after that, so it became a camp tradition that I would go and jump off the high dive again and again and again to the point where I did it my, all through up to my senior year. Then when I came back as a counselor, I was doing it. Then when I came back as a director, I was doing it. I actually drove all the kids out there. We had a hundred and some kids. And the first thing that would happen would be director Dave was going to go jump off the high dive. So I went to the high dive and I went to jump off of it first thing jumped off, but as I was jumping, the skies uh, opened up and thunder lightning started peeling across. And so I fell into the pool and instantly they blew the whistle and they forced everybody to get out of the pools and they shut everything down. So my campers were incredibly angry with me because they said that I pulled down the sky. There was this one kid, true story, he is like this little nerdy kid, and he did this algorithm, that, uh, this scientific thing that said that I created a vortex that pulled down the sky, and um, which is totally not scientific, but they all believed it, and that was, uh, that was my life. So, yes. So I was not always this big. So listen, go to the gym. Keep, keep going to the gym. Okay? All right. Yeah. Get those reps in. Get those reps in. Because it comes on fast. All right. Yes. You didn't get a wristband? Well, that guy will take care of you. He'll take care of you. Matt will take care of you. All right. I think we are good. It's 958. So we're going to transition. You guys have been awesome. Have a wonderful conference. <laughs>